supernatural that God has given the seasons to teach us that in every one of our lives he has seasons I don't know where you are tonight but maybe it feels like you're in a winter time and you don't really know what's going on and you feel it's just cold and it's dark and there's not much happening and you just feel you know the way you feel you get up on some December morning and you just feel like going to the day again maybe that's you here tonight spiritually but I want to say something God is working in the season because the season the winter is essential to kill all the germs and to kill all the fungus and to kill all the disease in the ground and to give the ground rest and to give the trees and the plants rest that strength can come but yeah I just really feel God saying it's time for somebody here tonight to move out of the season you're in I'm bringing you into a new season if we're not naive tonight here to think that even taste will go on forever what's happening here on the Friday nights it's for a season it's for a season we don't know how long but it's for a season but what God's saying is grasp what happens to happen in the season because over there in Proverbs it just really struck me it says the lazy man will not plow because of the cold of winter and he shall beg in the time of harvest and it's so easy when it's winter time to say oh I'm not going out today to work I'll wait till springtime I'll wait till it's warmer but the time for plowing is in the winter and you know God has got a purpose for you in this season you're in in your life tonight where you don't think anything happen, is happening God has got a purpose in this season and what I really encourage you tonight is to step out and to do what God wants to do in this time I can remember before I was saved I was 17 or 18 years of age and I was a Highland and you know I was out Palm Bridge every Saturday night the band will take plenty of my money put it that way in the coach but for a season I started to go along to meetings like youth meetings and things and God was speaking to me and God was really speaking to me and I can remember I went out you know off my head on a Saturday night but on a Sunday night I was on meetings and I knew and I was I knew God was after me but you know there came a point and I remember one night coming out of Auckland Sky driving up a road I knew in my heart that night God was after me like never before. There was an appeal made to me and I sat on my hands that I wouldn't put my hand up. But I can remember driving up the road and going around a corner and there's a guy flicked his car on its roof in front of me coming up the road and I closed my eyes because he's coming up my side of the road and I thought I was gone. But God spoke to me in that moment. And God says this to you, but it's now or never. Because what I realized that night, it was the end of the season. And God is saying there's something I want to bring salvation. This is a season of grace in your life and I want to save you. But this is the end of the season. And maybe you're here tonight and I just really want to encourage you. Just I wanted to share this at the start because we're going to pray and then we're going to go into worship. But as we just pray, I want you to ask God, Lord, if you do you want to share something with me tonight? Do you want me to move on out of the season? Am I in the summer but yet I'm wearing my Santa hat because I'm holding on to things in the past and I'm not in the place and the season you want me to be in because of something that's happened in the past I have not let go of a disappointment, a hurt, a failure maybe you're here tonight and you don't really know why you're here but you're not saved tonight and you're saying I want you to ask God Lord if you this for a season is this a season the Bible says my spirit would always strive with man there's a season for God speaking to you. And so, Father, Father, just at the very outset tonight, we come and we open up our hearts to you. And we open up our minds and we open up our will. And we open up every part of ourselves to you, Lord. And we just say, Holy Spirit, would you come and would you minister to us in this place tonight?
Jesus tonight is absolutely amazing. Amen. Absolutely amazing. And friends, if you don't agree, <laughs> there's a door. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be unfair. But he is amazing. And if you're living a normal Christian life with Holy Spirit given 2020 vision, you can agree Jesus is amazing. <laughs> I was reading a wee scripture today and it says whenever Jesus came down off the mountain in the days of his flesh it says the crowds looked at him so he didn't say anything he didn't do anything he just stood there the five ten that he would have been probably and he just stood there and it says this and they were amazed at him they were amazed at him and I love this wee detail it goes on to say there was a demon possessed fellow and it says whenever Jesus came near and the demon was in the fella, saw Jesus coming near him. It says the demon rose up and was scared. That was Jesus in his flesh. And this is what I bring to you tonight. What we've sang about is Jesus risen, exalted, magnified to the right hand of the Father. The question I ask you tonight is how much more amazing would he be to look at now? He's not more amazing, he was always the same. That was in the days of his flesh when that glory was concealed. But imagine what he looks like now. Before the Father, shining in blazing glory. And the Bible says that when John saw him, who was his best friend, when John saw him, he says, I fell at his feet as dead. Mm -hmm. That he lost all power in his legs. He lost all power in his physical body. He just fell into a heap before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Friends, that's who Jesus is tonight. I mean, that's who he is, for goodness sake. Mm -hmm. I speak to Christians and say, you know this guy, you're named after Christ. You know, oh, I, I went over him. And there's such a dullness. There is such a dullness around Christians and you would love to shake them by the ankles and say, look guys, he is just downright amazing. Yeah. And if you could catch a glimpse of him tonight, how captivating he really is, how beautiful he really is, how awesome he really is, you'd be leaving this place bouncing. Yeah. You'd be leaving this place bouncing tonight, there wouldn't be a sour look in the house. <laughs> you would be absolutely out of your socks amazed at who Jesus is. And yet this is what I ask is, why aren't we excited about him? I'm not, I'm not here tonight like some van camp and trying to drill us all up and get us all excited for Jesus. And it's just all hype. I'm saying, what well, if you get the revelation of who he is, that sets you on fire. If the demons look at him and tremble, and the powers of darkness run away as if he's like a force of nature coming against them, what should our response be when he doesn't want to threaten us? He wants to love us. That he's come to deliver us. He's come to set us free. He's died and rose again to give us a second chance. I mean, how awesome is he? Amen. And I just ask you tonight, are you captivated by him? Are you in love with him? I'm not asking you how much you know or how many Bible studies you go to each week. I'm just saying, do you love Jesus? Yes. And I'm getting about two people so far saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you have nobody respectable Northern Irish Christians. Shake off respectability and love God. <laughs> Honestly, shake it off. Shake off the respectability. Your respectability is just fear of man. That's all it is. You're afraid of somebody looking at you and saying boo to you. Who cares? I'm standing up here looking like an agent. I don't care. I love Jesus with all my heart. And he's amazing whenever you catch a glimpse of him. When you go to the prayer closet and he reveals himself to you and you just see a wee glimpse of what he's like and you just say, I am absolutely floored at the sight of who the Lord is. Brings you to tears. Brings you to laughter. Brings you to real heartfelt joy. I remember a number of years ago doing outreach in Bombridge. And I remember speaking to a fella, he just happened to be a Catholic fella, that's immaterial, I don't care. For a Protestant and Catholic, those tags are immaterial to me. If you're here tonight, whatever side of the house you came to belong to, Jesus loves you. Yeah. want you to know that. Nobody's here saying what, side of the, what foot do you kick with. I'm not saying, that's not what we're here tonight. We're saying about Jesus loves you. What happened to me, this fella was a Catholic fella. And he got in his head, he says, you're a Protestant. And he says, I'm not a Protestant, I'm a follower of Jesus. <laughs> I had a bit of, he says, we're going to have a bit of an argument. He went back and forth, back and forth for 45 minutes, talking about, well, I believe I'm right in all this sort of caper. And just something rose in me, and I just said, but the problem is you don't know Jesus. You don't know his presence. You don't know the peace that he wants to give you. You don't know the joy. You don't know the wisdom. You don't know the guidance. You don't know his presence. You don't know his power. And he broke down and he cried. He says, you're right. He says, I go to a church, but I don't know Jesus. Totally different guy. And I could be speaking to people tonight, and you're Protestant. Oh, you're proud of your Protestantism, all right. You're proud because your backside's planted on a pew every Sunday in a certain place. But I ask you, do you know Jesus? And I ask you even further, do you love him? 
Because the Bible says, and these are strong words, it says, whoever does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be a curse. Mm -hmm. That's strong. Mm -hmm. That's what the Word of God says. I want to ask you, do you know him? Do you know him? And do you love him? Mm -hmm. So let's talk with scripture tonight. This has been on my heart all week. And we're going to get back into loving Jesus and worship him here. But it's John 1. <coughs> I want to read this wee passage to you tonight. It's a wee favorite passage of mine. The one guy I want to meet when I get to heaven, and it's Nathaniel. <coughs> When we read about him this maybe one time in the Gospel of John. But I love this. I love this. And I want to just say this one simple thing to you tonight. Honesty opens heaven. Amen. Honesty opens heaven. I want to read this wee scripture. Look what you say here about Nathaniel. Uh, verse 45. Look at this. John chapter 1. Verse 45. So Philip found Nathanael and said to him we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph we have found the long prophesied long promised Messiah Jesus Christ came in fulfillment of hundreds of years old of prophecy we're not here tonight saying oh we love Jesus because we're a pack of fruit loops we're not here tonight telling you love Jesus because there's no evidence for it. We're telling you the evidence is pointed towards one man, Christ, who has came to fulfill the prophecies. Where he was born, where he would live, what miracles he would do, how he would die on the cross, how he would rise again, how he would ascend up into heaven, how he would pour out the Holy Spirit. All those things fulfill Old Testament prophecy. We're not believing in pipe dreams here tonight. We're believing in fulfilled prophecies. So he says, come and see this man, Jesus. And Nathaniel said to him, now catch this, can anything good come out of Nazareth. Nazareth, by the way, was a hellhole. It was Nazareth and Galilee of the Gentiles. It was full of witchcraft. A rabbi started a, a, a synagogue or started a Bible study group in, uh, in Galilee. And it took him 18 years and he gave up after 18 years and he said, oh, Galilee, Galilee, you hate the Torah. It was a God-forsaken hellhole. And yet, isn't it amazing? God sent his son into a hellhole and now the Bible speaks about a man called Jesus of Nazareth. He can turn any hellhole around. Amen. He can turn any situation around. Amen. Jesus Christ can come into Northern Ireland and turn the thing around. Amen. He can come into Ireland and turn the thing around. He can come into your life and turn the thing around. Amen. If he could be identified with Nazareth, the lawless, demon-possessed hellhole of a place that it was, and yet he came and transformed it. And everybody says, Nazareth must have been a good place that Jesus came from it. That's what he does. He comes into lives and he turns chains them upside down. So this is what you read. Philip said to him, come and see. So this is what I said to you tonight. You could be here, brought up in church, brought up and all that stuff, but you do not know Jesus. Come and see him. Come and see. Read the Gospels for yourself. Get into a place. Just say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. I mean, he'll do it. I mean, absolutely amaze you. He'll do it. He'll reveal himself. Don't be doubting about how he's going to do it. He'll reveal himself. But this is what happens. Verse 47. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him. And he said of him, Behold an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. And Jesus talks to him. We have it further in these verses. And he says, You know, before uh, I saw you, you were in the, I saw you before you when you were on the fig tree. You know, this was a, he was having a prayer time probably. Jesus saw him, prophesied over his life. An amazing piece of information. And 49 says, Nathaniel answered and said, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. That's an encounter with Jesus. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Most assuredly, I said to you, Hereafter, you shall see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is what I want to share. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Jesus says there, he says, you will see heaven opened. You will see heaven opened. Now, what is that all about? There's a lot of people and their spiritual experience is that the heavens are like brass doors. Locked shut, shut with seven bolts. And anytime you try to pray, it's like your prayers bounce off the ceiling and hit the ground again. Anytime you try to connect with God, God seems so far away. You just see the cold, steely glaze of heaven. And you just feel, God doesn't love me. God doesn't care about me. People talk about God's presence. They get excited about God. I think there's something wrong in their head. That's what you think. But Jesus says to this man, 
you will see heaven opened. What does that look like? It means that the spiritual world that was shut off will become real to you. God's presence will become real to you. God will no longer be this God locked up in heaven, but he'll become your personal father. And you'll see who God is like, and you'll love him with all your heart. You'll see what God is like. Heaven becomes real to you. It's not church. Friends, if I could go through Ireland and take every pew and every pulpit and put it on a bonfire and burn the whole thing and get together in a simple wee room and meet God, I'd be all for that. Maybe nobody else is for that, but <laughs> I sort of radical moments. <laughs> but friends, too often we go to churches and houses of God and the heavens are like brass. And we're not connecting with God. And God's not real to us. And the presence of God's not real to us. Why is that? Why is that? <coughs> Jesus speaks to this man and he says, Behold an Israelite in whom is no deceit. It's not an interesting thing to say. It's as if Jesus said, Hey guys, gather around. See this guy? You need to look at him. <coughs> Why? Because I find a man in the whole of Israel who's real, who's honest with me. And this is the simple principle. Honesty before God unlocks heaven. The reason why our churches and a lot of Christians in our land are not connecting with the presence of God is that we are frankly dishonest. Not because we're liars, not because we're doing anything maliciously wrong, but because religion will tell you to be on your best behavior and being on your best behavior is sometimes deceitful behavior. It will tell you, confess the creeds. Sing the hymns, raise your paws, sing the songs on the screen. But you're in the church service and your heart's broken. You're in that place and you're full of sin and you're not actually being real with God. And you're coming before God and saying, oh God, you're great and holy and lovely and all the rest. But you're not real. You're not real with God. Why should he be real with you? Nathaniel came and he said, Nazareth's a hellhole. Why would any Messiah come out of that? And Jesus says, I love your honesty. It's not a, I mean, imagine you got into a prayer meeting and said, no, oh, there's a little hellhole of a place and we're praying here. I mean, that's not what you'd want to hear. But the Lord registered his honesty. Quite dishonest with God. You wonder why you're not connecting with God like you should because you're not being real with him. Come, do you know what that looks like? There are days I come before God and says, I don't want to pray today. But do you know what happens when I start to come to God and say, I don't want to pray today? It gets you chose up, God. <laughs> I don't want to worship today. I feel depressed. What happens when I start to worship God? He shows up. When I connect with him and I don't have any artifice, any facade, any mask on, any sort of religious performance to live up to, any sort of um, you know, projection of myself to God and say, oh, this is who I am. You can't sell God a pup. You can't do it. He's smarter than any one of us here tonight. He can see right through you. His eyes are like fire. He sees right into your heart. He knows you and who you are. He knows your secrets. He knows everything that goes through your head. He knows every dream. He knows every thought. He knows every single ambition. He knows every rotten thing. He knows every good thing. He knows everything about you. He's known you from your mother's womb. He knows you right now. He knows what's going through your head right now. He knows everything. Why then should you come and say, Oh God, I want to sell you this beautiful image of myself. Just be real. Just be real. You read about a man, Jeremiah, in the Old Testament. Jeremiah comes before God and this is what he prays. God, you lied to me. You lied to me. Well, thank you, Brother Jeremiah. Now, would you mind sitting down? That would really cause a ruckus in the prayer meeting. Would you stop doing that? But he was honest with God. He says, God, as I read the situation, you have told me to go and preach this message. I'm being persecuted. You've lied to me. Do you know what happens? God spoke to him. If Jeremiah had put on this facade and says, Oh, God, you're holy and just and... I believe, you know, what I ought to believe and I want to be a best behaved little boy and do what I'm supposed to do. Heaven ought to shut off. Heaven hates hypocrisy. When God came down, as Jesus came into this world, do you know the one sin he preached against the most? Hypocrisy. <laughs> hypocrisy. Acting. The facade. The religious behavior. The religious performance. Aren't you sick of it yourself? Yeah. One of us is. <laughs> What does God think about the whole thing? You go to Sundays, you preach, you pray, you, you go to sit and sing, and you do all that stuff. 
or do I really connect with an open heaven? <clears throat> I want to bring this to a very simple head tonight. Where are you with God? Where are you tonight? Where are you? <laughs> so point say, oh, I am in this place of worship tonight, and I'm here for the fun, and I'm going to get with tea and biscuits. And... No, no. Where are you with God? That's what's important tonight. You could be the most beautiful person here, the most intelligent person, the most affluent person, the most brilliant person, the most funny person in this room tonight. But if you're not right with God, what's the point? What's the point? On your deathbed as you enter into heaven, and you enter into that space of glory and you just see, really the only currency is the knowledge of God. The only thing that matters when you get to heaven is, well, did you know God? Do you know God? Are you honest enough to say tonight, look, I am struggling with stuff? Are you honest enough to say, I have lost my passion? Are you honest enough tonight to say, I haven't a clue what Christianity is all about? I don't know anything. Can I say to you, if you call your God and say that, as honest as you can be, whether that is good, bad, or ugly, and you come to God and say, here I am. Here I am. Like Isaiah, when he saw the glory of God, the holiness of God, he said, woe is me, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the race of a people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the Lord, the Lord of glory. They honestly opened heaven. Dishonesty shuts heaven. If we want to live a lie, God will let us live a lie. If you want reality, you enter into the truth. Jesus said, whoever is off the truth comes into the light that his deeds will be exposed. You can come to God and be honest and say, look, this is where I'm at. Allow his light to shine into your life. And he'll show you where you're at. You could be here this evening and you are not a follower of Jesus. You're certainly familiar with God. You might say, I believe that God exists. But you are not a disciple. Come into the light. Jesus will show you something you may not want to see. He will show you that you're a sinner. You will not like that, but that's the truth. <coughs> He will show you that you are powerless to save yourself. You cannot do anything good or, or, or merit, meriting anything from God. You can't do anything. You have to fall at the feet of Jesus and receive his gift of forgiveness and mercy. And he'll save you like that. I want to tell you something that will cheer your heart tonight. Jesus is bubbling with joy. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite wee verses in Luke 10. It says when, when the disciples came back to Jesus and they said, we've cast out so many demons. We've healed so many sick people. You know what the Bible says? Get this in your head. Luke chapter 10, I think it says. It says, Jesus danced for joy. Jesus wasn't Presbyterian. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he danced. Can you get a theology in your head of the Son of God dancing because he hears a breakthrough? And everybody's going, oh, if that's what we have to do then I suppose <laughs> better follow the dutiful <laughs> Jesus was so animated here's the point I'm trying to get across to you you're here tonight and you're lost in your sin you're on the broad road leading to destruction if Jesus Christ saves you tonight he's going to do it with a smile on his face yeah. he's going to pull you out of that dark road that leads to hell he's going to put you onto heaven and says praise the Lord another one saved yes. If you're here tonight and you have an issue in your body and you need healing, Jesus is delighting to heal that. Yes. He takes joy over the body that he's given you and he wants to heal that. If there's a demon in this room tonight, well, guess what? I speak to all the demons in there. With joy, he drives you out. Yes. With joy, he does it with a song of deliverance. He sets his people free. I like a savior who runs into the battle singing. That puts a fear in them. He follows us and surrounds us with songs of deliverance and he brings freedom. And the Bible says for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame, hung on a cross because joy was burning in his heart because he was going to win you back to God. He says, I'm going to win back this room to myself. He said, I'm far gone. He died to reach you that far. He died to reach you that far. Oh, friends, if you could just see the majestic wonder of who the Son of God is tonight. The joy that is beating in his heart. He's the, he's the worship leader in heaven. Do you know that? Revelation 19 says there came a voice from the throne and it says, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Who was shouting hallelujah? 
Jesus. Jesus isn't brother neither. <laughs> There's hallelujahs in heaven, you know that. And everybody said, bo -bo -bo -bo. <laughs> Friends, if you could see the sheer delight that the Lord has over you, He looks at you and says, You fill my heart with joy. I love you. You failed, you've made mistakes. He says, But when my grace comes and touches you, you're amazing. You're amazing. You're an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. I love you. <coughs> but be real with me. Stop trying to live this lie. Stop trying to peddle this religious myth that you know is fake. Stop trying to be the good girl. Stop trying to be the good boy. Stop trying to be the religious goody two-shoes. Just fall at his feet and say, I'm a dud if necessary. I've messed it up. I have no passion for God, I have no interest in God, I have no real desire, I'm backslidden, whatever, I'm a sinner, whatever you have to say. But if you're honest, heaven will open and God's presence will meet you. It's as simple as that. If you're dishonest, the draw bars up. You can't connect with God. <clears throat> I don't know where you're at tonight. Take this key of honesty in your hand. And Jesus said to this man, he says, I have found, let's put it like this, I have found an Irish man. I have found an Irish woman. I have found an Ulster man. I have found an Ulster woman in whom there's no deceit. Who's real with me. Heaven will open to you, sir. Heaven will open to you, mother. And this is what Jesus promises. You will see the Son of Man, Jesus himself, the angels of God ascending and descending. Heaven will become real to you. You will see a supernatural life unfurled before you. And he says these beautiful words, and you shall see greater things. Can I present this final thought? Imagine here, there's a door in front of us. The door is, is basically shut. But I've had a sneak peek behind the door. And it's frankly amazing. It's your future. It's your future. But it has to be Jesus' way. Not your way, not just, oh, well, if it's, if it's God's will, it will fall. You know, what, whatever's mine will, you know, will come to me. Don't take that passive attitude. Don't, don't go down that. I'm saying there's an amazing future there. You're on this other side of the door. What you need to do is open the door with honesty. And Jesus said to Nathaniel, you will see greater things. This was the same guy who six months later is laying hands on sick people. And they're getting up again and being healed. This is the same man in six months and he's laying hands on demon-possessed people and the demons are coming out of them. So one day we'll see the resurrected Jesus in an upper room and has dinner with him. And Jesus says, peace be with you, Nathaniel. This is the same Nathaniel that will go to the upper room and the Holy Ghost is poured out and he's speaking in tongues. <laughs> if your theology disagrees with that, get better theology. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, Nathaniel went through that door with an honest heart. Not a sinless heart, an honest heart. If you will go through that door tonight with honesty and say, God, here I am. He'll take you in. He'll take you in. I want us to bow our heads. We're going to worship God again. But I want us to do this with honesty. A.W. Tozer said, Christians don't tell lies, they sing them. They sing them. I don't want us to do any sacrilege to these beautiful songs tonight. I want us to sing these things out of a true heart. Do you realize this is a prayer meeting tonight? We just use melody instead of, you know, liturgy. You're singing prayers. I want you to be honest before God. Put your head down there and just say, look, God, this is where I'm at. And I, I tell you, friends, it's as simple. You think it's complicated. It's not. You be honest with God. He'll meet you. He says, if you seek me, you'll find me when you search me all your heart. He'll meet you. If you're not a Christian here tonight, can I tell you, everything's been paid for for you to get saved. You say, oh, I don't know if I'm ready. You are ready because he ready did it. <laughs> you come to Jesus, you say, I'm a sinner. Just admit you're a sinner. That's some self-explanatory. If you've told lies, if you've cheated, if you've stolen, if you've lusted in your heart, well, you're a sinner. That's what you are. You can't save yourself. Jesus had to die for you. Go to Jesus now. Ask him to save you. He'll do it. Whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. You're a Christian tonight. You need to be full of the Holy Spirit. Realize, come before God and says, I'm as dry as a brick. I'm as dry as a stone. 
If you're struggling with sin tonight, just say, I'm struggling with this addiction. Whatever it is. But Jesus can break it tonight. I don't care what it is. If it's a pornography, if it's lust, if it's any sexual thing, he can break that off tonight in Jesus' name. God sets people free into purity. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't know what it is. Depression, anxiety, whatever the, whatever the heck the thing is. Just be honest with Jesus. Say, this is where I'm at. When you come to him and say, this is what I am. He introduces as I am the great I am. And he sets you free. Be honest. Like, back before God, just say, this is where I'm at. And let's pray. I'm going to pray just over us tonight. let anybody be anxious tonight. Be anxious for nothing. God's got this. You're anxious over wee things the other night. No, he's got it. He's got this lock, stock and barrel. He loves you. He loves you. Let that love cast out all your fears. Let him just bring you to himself. Come to the door. There's an amazing future behind it. Just come through. Be honest with the whole God. He'll open the door for you. Oh, Father in heaven, we come before you tonight and we love you. We love you with all of the that in us and this is in us. You're the God of heaven and earth. And all of heaven shouts your praises. Amen. All of heaven roars your name. Amen. The great divine God. The great awesome one. Awesome in power and holiness. Beauty and awe. And Father, we come before you tonight. And we just admit, Lord, we are the broken. Amen. We are the sinful. Lord, we haven't got it all together yet we think we have Lord we're honest tonight we need you we need you our land needs you Ireland needs you UK and the continent of Europe need you oh that you'd open the heavens oh that you'd open the heavens over this place tonight open the heavens over this gallery over every hungry heart over every honest life there's nothing to hide you said to Jesus, your son, come by with me the gold tried in the fire. You're blind, you're wretched, you're lame, you don't have much. But I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man, he said, will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. And I will have supper with him. And he will be. Lord Jesus will love you tonight. We'll love you in this house. We just want to raise your name and just say you're amazing. And I pray over this meet, Lord, if there's anybody here, that's not a Christian, not a child of God yet. Lord, they're not going to heaven yet, but it's yet. They could get saved tonight and go to heaven. And I pray this evening, Lord Jesus, when you bring them to the throne of grace, save souls in this meeting right now. Any backsliders, Lord, in this place, Lord, they've lost their first love. They're not close to you today as they should be. Bring them back to the first love. Let them repent of the old, Lord, distractions and come back to you. Fill Christians in this meeting tonight with the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, anybody that's desiring to be full of the Spirit of God, fill them, Lord, with the Spirit tonight. Fill them by the end of this week. And we pray, Lord, now, seal in everything that's of you here. And just let it, Lord, resonate and let it ruminate inside of our hearts. And let it bear all of its fruit, we pray now. Lord, help us to worship you with honesty. That you would delight in the spirit of our song, not the noise, not the melodies, not the words of the content but the spirit in which we sing it's honest it's real we're walking in the light yes. as you're in the light Lord and it's, it's lovely before you so come and have your way Lord Jesus let's all rise to our feet here and let's worship the Lord you be honest with God here. be honest with God tonight be real <coughs> he'll open it up for you ask tonight Jesus open my eyes to see who you are Open my eyes to the beauty. Open my eyes to your majesty. Open my eyes to your holiness and your, your wisdom and your awe and your wonder. Friends, leave this meet tonight with one blessing on your heart. Jesus Christ has amazed you. He's amazed your soul. He's amazed your mind. He's amazed you. You leave this house and you just say, isn't it an amazing Jesus? An amazing Savior that we call him. So let's worship him as we conclude this night.
you might not speak again in this way. And if you go out the door tonight, it says today, if you hear his voice, he still doesn't have to deal with it tomorrow. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart to it. But deal with it tonight. We're here at the front to pray with us. It's not really about us. We're just saying tonight, deal with whatever God is. God has put something before you tonight. Deal with it. And be honest with it. And so, Father, Father, we just want to thank you for tonight. Lord, it's an awesome thing to be in your presence. Lord, it's more than this world can ever offer. Father, tonight I thank you that you have let us taste of your presence. You've let us taste of your goodness. You've shown us a little more tonight of who you are. And Lord, we're hungry for more. We want more of you. I pray, Father, I pray, Father, that we will get more of you, that we will know more of the Lord Jesus in our lives, and that, Lord, that we will go out and be atmosphere changers in that world, not because of who we are, but because you come and you live within us. And so, Father, we just ask, Lord, if you've been speaking tonight, you'll speak on and you'll give grace, and you'll give power, and you'll give everything that's needed, Lord, to deal with the issues. And, Father, we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, you do it tonight with joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Lord, it's not a burden to you. It's not, Lord, some drudgery to you tonight. But, God, just to think that you are so excited, Lord, to come and to deal with the things in our lives. We just want to bless you tonight, Lord Jesus. We bless you that you've purposed and you've finished everything, Lord, on that cross. We bless you, Lord, that you went right through, Lord. You didn't say, oh, well, I'll maybe do it another day. But, Lord, you've done it. And you finished it indeed. And we just want to bless you and be glory in what you've done tonight. And we honor you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for this food and for everything, Lord. We thank you for each and every single person. We pray that you would bless them as we go our shepherd ways tonight and bless our homes and bless our families. In Jesus' name, amen.